Welcome back to this old house. Today we'll show you a new way that we're protecting our house from air and water. We've taken a more dimensionally stable OSB, and then we have a laminar facer. And we'll visit a shop and see our historic window sash restored. I'll tell you, this is a great time saver. Wow, oh, look at that, that comes right off. And we'll deal with a major discovery in the kitchen. They cut right through this thing. Right through, right off. Much of the work on our renovation is going on out back here. This is a new family room addition, and it is about 400 square feet of new space. Now, last week we raised the gable end wall, and then after that, well, Tommy and his guys were off to the races. They brought up the other side walls, and then he laid in a huge ridge beam, and on top of that, he framed himself a roof. And this addition was built pretty much the way Tommy's been building for decades, except there's one thing different. It's green, and I was wondering why, so we asked Joe Stebrick, a building science engineer, to come in and tell us why. Joe, why is our addition green? Keep the water out and keep the air out. But we've been doing that for centuries. Uh, we've been doing it differently over 300 years. We're getting better at it. All right. How did we used to do it? Well, we didn't do anything 300 years ago. We built out a thousand-year-old pieces of wood, and uh, it's okay for them to get wet as long as they dried, and they did because these walls were completely uninsulated. Right. And then the uh, big improvement was that uh, we should put rosin paper over the, the cracks. So just putting the paper over these seams meant the air didn't blow through your house and that increased comfort. Amazing. <laughs> All right. That is true. And then um, that, that change happened uh, about 100 years ago, the turn of the last century around the 1900s. And then in the 1920s and 1930s, we began to add insulation into the cavities and uh, eelgrass and straw. Um, we saw the early uh, fiberglass products, and we reduced energy flow, and people realized that well, we had to actually start focusing on rain as well. So the next innovation was to treat the rosin paper with asphalt, and so we ended up inventing or developing old-fashioned tar paper. And that's the black layer that we're looking at right here, impregnated with tar. And so the tar paper served two functions, uh, air control and water control. But remember, it was the air control first and the water control second. But today, I see house wrap on buildings. It looks just like this. It goes all around the building. What is this doing for us? Well, in the 1980s, it was a fabulous improvement. It was doing exactly what the tar paper did, but did it better. Mm -hmm. uh, fewer joints, and we could actually tape, joint, tape, tape these materials together. And so it was doing what it was supposed to do, but doing a better job than the old tar paper. So if it's doing it well, if it's keeping the air and the water out, why are we getting rid of it and turning our houses into green where there is no house wrap? Well, it's even better now. We've saved a, we've saved a step. We, we've gotten rid of a layer. We don't have to go around the building more than once now. So this is like the paper right into the sheathing. That's correct. We've, we've, we've taken a, a more dimensionally stable OSB with more resin content. Right. And then we have a facer or a lamina. Uh, think, of, think of a facer as being ultra thin mosquito netting uh, impregnated with uh, latex paint that happens to be green in color. So we impregnate it right into the OSB and it helps keep the, this makes it watertight. You know, the water can get on this, no problem. And we have to do the joint detail, and so we have to tape the joints to handle uh, both the water control and the air control. So Got a seam like this, and you're saying that we put the tape over it, it looks like this. The facing actually helps the tape stick to do its job. And so this is keeping out the air and the water just like we used to, but all sort of in one step. In one step. And this technology is pretty much the death knell for the traditional house wrap. Really? So no more house wraps, we're going to start building green. We're going to be starting green. but. Could be pink, could be brown. All right, well, thank you, Joe. You're welcome.